Welcome. This video is going to show you how to create a simple class in C++. The first thing we want to do is create a new project. So we say file new project and we're going to create a simple class application. So we'll just call it um, animal because we're going to use an animal as the theme of this. And then, you know, for the application settings, make sure that you select empty project and then finish. Now we'll start with just creating a simple class in the same file as main. So we say add new item. And, you know, we could just call the source file main if you like and then click on add so you can see that I'm adding to the project that's in my CPP programs folder I've got C++ CPP file selected and then I have to proceed to put in the opening information using namespace standard and then int main and then return zero at the end. So I'm going to increase the size of the font so you can see this a little better. Now, you know, later we'll look at creating a class in a separate file, but just so that you get a feel for you know creating a basic class let's just create it right within the same program as main and you know this is a, a little more of an advanced kind of um, video because you should already have learned how to do you know operators and variables and data types looping and conditionals uh, I'll make some videos that discuss those later, but for now we want to focus on object-oriented programming. So the first thing you want to do is just create a class and let's just call the class Lion, okay? And Lion is the name of the class we're going to use as what we call a uh, data type. So it's not the kind of data type that you're used to in terms of integer, float, character, double. Those are called primitive data types. A, a uh, class is a more complex data type. So for example, if I create that class and then I want to create a uh, object on that class, I could say, um, let's say uh, Leo, okay, is the lion and then I say build and you can see that when I build this it's going to allow me to create a variable of type lion so lion is a data type and it's kind of evident in that when you create a variable you're basically doing the same thing that you would do if you said int x you know, int would be the data type, x would be the variable, but here we say lion leo, lion is the data type, leo is the variable, but in object-oriented programming we call lion the class, leo the object. Class object, type variable, kind of the same thing, um, but you know, if you create this without having anything within the class, then you know of course you can't do anything with it so the first thing you want to do is create some sort of data within the um, class so we can say something like double um, weight okay and we could say something like string uh, color and perhaps um, int age. 
Now, the problem with using a string uh, like that, we have to, of course, include string, okay, the header file. And then um, there's what's called accessibility inside of a class. Now, if we make this public, we could access all of the data in there and it becomes something similar to what we call a struct. So for example, if I wanted to say leo.weight equals 350.0, that's perfectly possible. I could say color dot, I'm sorry, leo.color equals tan and then uh, leo.age equals five. So if we wanted to you know just use what are called public accessibility variables you know we could just use a class as a container of data and then I could just say see out leo dot weight and it would you know allow me to access the data very readily you know you could see the output just shows um, the weight of the lion. However, you know, we we really prefer to make the data in an accessibility we call private. Um, I mean, if we wanted to keep it as public, we could actually remove the word public and put struct here, and it really would just revert to being the same exact kind of um, functionality where in the fa in the, in the uh, case of a struct we do not have to specify public for the data to be public within the struct that's the default of structs is to have public data the default of classes is to have private data so you know structs are something of a throwback to C language and, and, and uh, C++ introduced the concept of classes to the C++ plus, uh, the C language family if you will um, so it's it's important to know how to use structs for you know basic data storage and uh, you know the fact that everything's public in a struct is is um, something you should know but in a uh, class kind of situation, if we try to access the data now without putting the word public, you'll notice that I'll get a bunch of errors basically saying that um, cannot access private member declared in class lion. So all three of those or even this statement, all the statements that are accessing those variables cannot do so because they're defaulted to be private. So um, the dilemma then you should see is that how do we access that data? How do we put values into those variables when they're private? Okay, so you know, one way of doing that is to create what are called methods or functions inside of the class, and those would be designated as public entities within the class. So right now we have private entities, which are the data. So the member data are private. The member functions, which we call methods when they're inside of a class, are public. So what we could do is we could create a um, what's called a set method, we can say um, void set weight and then put a, a double parameter, say w, and then just put a um, weight equals w. And then we could do the same thing for the string, void set color string c and then we'll put color equals C and then finally we'll say void set age 
int a, and then we'll we'll put the um, age equals a. Now we can actually uh, set the values, but not through a direct access of the variables. We would have to call a function. So you would have to change this to set weight, and then pass the 350 as a parameter and then likewise we would have to change the access of color to set color and the, the way I'm naming these functions in the class is really just a convention that I follow which many others follow which is just to put the word set before the name um, the name of the variable that you're affecting that you're mutating that is that you're changing that you're setting put the word set and then you know camel casing by putting a capital as the initial letter so that's just a convention and you could use that convention as you like now the thing is we we also want to be able to get the data back from the uh, class so in this case we create a, a uh, set of methods that are get methods or accessor methods. So the way that these work is they kind of mirror the set weight, set color, set age, but they're gonna be get weight, get color, get age. In order for us to get a value from the uh, class objects, which Leo is an object of type lion class, we need to declare the type, or I should say the, uh, the method get weight as the type that it returns. So if we say return weight, okay, then that method double get weight will in fact return a double value. And then the next one will be string get color. And again, the form would be return color. So we're, at, we're returning the actual data and um, get age. The thing about using methods to get the data is that you secure the data by making it private. Um, and then you, you control access to the data by using public methods. So private member data, public member functions. And then in order to find out what Leo's weight is, we now have to do a get weight instead of a, uh, just accessing Leo directly, uh, Leo's variables, and then we could output cout.leo.getColor to find out what the lion's color is, and then cout.leo.getAge, which will tell us the age of that lion. Um, so basically we have a short program that shows us how to set up data inside of a class where we have you know a basic design on a class where the data is private and I'll just put a comment here uh, private is the default so it doesn't uh, have to be stated here you know so however you know it's just a convention to put a section that's private and then list the variables that you're going to use and then a section that pu that's public so everything from this word public down is considered public data and then um, when we move to the main function we see we create a object of type Leo of type lion called Leo and then we proceed to set the values indirectly we're, we're using a function a public function to, to set private data and then we use again public functions to get the data get weight get color get age and then when we um, run this we're going to recompile it and we'll just see the output is basically what we um, expected, you know, as if uh, the data were public. And that concludes this video. Thank you.